Hi folks, what we're going to do today is, is that uh, let me get this horse to back up off of my seat. Now I know you've seen videos on this before but I want to show Deb the sequence and then she's going to be doing it. And um, that's why the I start off with the snaffle just to get things organized and then I go to the western bit. So he's already pointed towards home. I've got a slack rein. I'm going to say excuse me. Then I'm going to get on and, excuse me, don't leave. Thank you very much. Okay, so now I'll walk in a circle and I'll get prepared. I'll be right back. So the way this works, I've got to drop nose band on him just for insurance. So he doesn't yawn, I waste time with him setting his jaw. What's going to happen is I'll put a dish in my spine, tighten my quads, don't look at my horse, lean back a half an inch, and ask him to walk backwards. I'll pull and as soon as his foot moves I'll give back one half of one inch, not six inches. The reason I start in the snaffle because it's a direct pull. Legs are off, looking up, hands low because of his nose, backing, backing, right leg back to straighten him out, hands low, keep hanging in there. You see how low my hands get? I've told you about the three positions of the snaffle. That's position one because of the nose. Just so you'll know, this horse used to be riding a tie down. Them days are over. Now I'll start again. As I sit, everything happens at once. Hands, spine, legs, lean. Right leg back, because he's got crooked again. He's got to put his nose down. There, his nose went down for a second. There, now there's no weight on my hand. Now as soon as I release, you hear the cricket. So what he's telling you is that I'm pushing with my tongue against the mouthpiece. That's what I do. So I can protect my mouth. I'm telling him, you don't need to protect your mouth. So I'll walk back up here again, and I'll get it set up again. Now, this is a six-year-old horse, and he's been rode a lot. I just need to get more finesse on him. So now I'm going to sit up, and when I want to stop, I'll sit down. Now my hands, there's no bend in my elbow, none, because I know he's going to raise his head up. Legs off, sitting up, leaning back, let him work it out. It's up to him, not me, left leg back, because he got crooked. Backing, right leg back, hind quarter went crooked, right leg back. Good, he's straight. Now just watch his head, forehand over. Good, backing, backing, in there. Now the good news is he's, he started off dragging and then he started picking his feet up. You can look at your tracks and see that. Now here's a, something to remember. I show you the good, the bad, and the ugly because you need to see that it's not real pretty when you start. So if you want to get up now and go throw up or something, that's fine. But I really appreciate if you stay to the end so you can see how this ends. Now, I'll set it up again and walk backwards. Pressure, 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 pressure. Release, release, pressure. Right leg back, horse is straight, hands down, wait for the nose. Nose is trying, hands down, wait for the nose. Pressure and release. Now he also had a, uh, he always wanted to put his tongue over the bit. Well we've been riding him in a western bit, you'll see it in a minute. But so far he hasn't tried to do it anymore. And one of the reasons is because the cricket now gives his tongue something to do. 
So I'll walk back up where I was. Then I'm gonna ask him to walk backwards. And then this trip, now it means it's all on me, not the horse. And what that means, you guys, is that how well can I present myself right now? Thank you. Right leg back, which means my leg, incidentally, when I feel him getting crooked. That's why I take my legs off so I can have something to put on. Left leg back, move the hip over, right leg, walking backwards. Hands down, moving the hip over, walking backwards, there. Now the last step, I heard the cricket. So two things happened. He learned to put himself in collection and to quit pushing with his tongue. So he found the release. You have to be aware of all these little things that happen so that you can move on instead of getting stuck in the same old thing. Because if you get stuck and you miss the, the flags of him saying, hey, I got it, then he'll go the other way and he'll get resentful. So now I know that he started to think. So once again, remember, how well can I present myself to my horse? It isn't about the horse anymore. It's about me and my presentation. <sighs> Hands down, spine, legs off, left leg back, right leg up back. There, walking backwards. Now listen. Walking backwards, you're fine horse, you're fine. Don't worry about it, good. The release. Doesn't need to throw his head anymore. You don't need to do that. Good. Hands low. Waiting for the cricket. Move your feet. There. Way to go. You're the best. He sorted it out. It's one of the seven reasons why I put the cricket in the bit. Now I'm not going to walk forward. I'm going to ask from here now because I'm gaining. If I walk forward, which in the beginning, there's a point to it. So he always gets comfortable about starting there. Now, I know he knows how to do it. So I'm gonna get my body put together, tighten my quads, present my skeleton and say, excuse me, would you walk backwards? Thank you so much. Oh, and yeah, go ahead and roll the cricket. Now, my legs are off. I'm telling him, I need you to walk backwards. My legs are off. Now, I'm about to put both legs on at the same time. And that means get your feet moving. Now I took them off again. Get your feet moving. Sort this one out. When I lean back, you walk backwards. There. Now, what he's doing is trying to put everything together. One way of looking at it, folks, the way I look at it, is what I do with my skeleton has to come out of the bottom of his feet. Oh, by the way, he's slinging his head, who cares? I'll tell him, you're fine. You can stop the cricket just by exhaling. You don't have to do it right now, just take it easy. So now, I'll walk back up where I was now I can feel the way he's walking, he's softer. So he's telling me, I'm starting to figure this out. So now I've got contact, but very little. I don't have to pick the reins up now. Now I sit down and stop. Now I sit up, lower my hands because of his nose still, and ask him to walk backwards. You're fine. Just put your nose down and walk backwards. Thank you so much. You're fine. Now, if you would, please, I'd like you to just walk backwards. Thank you. Don't worry about it. There, roll the cricket and walk backwards. Keep going. You're fine. Front end moves back over. Thank you. Okay, now you'll notice I ended up with a bend in my elbows. Because I got the, the nose where I wanted it, and I got the third vertebrae where I wanted it. Please remember that every time you go back up there, you got to say, okay. How well can you present yourself? Not, I'll show you, or this dumb horse, or he's stubborn. There's a group for that on Tuesdays. You need to say, how well can I present myself? So I am going to really focus on how well I can present myself to this horse. 
Now I've got a horse in a schooling walk. He's wondering what I'm asking. So I've got him in the palm of my hand right now. And now I don't. Now I don't. Now I do. Now I don't. Now I do. I will stop. And I will ask him to walk backwards. My legs came off. My left leg went back to straighten out his hip. He made it. He's starting to walk intentionally backwards. My elbows are bent now. My hands are low. I need him to bridle up and roll the cricket. Right leg back. Thank you. You're fine. Hands back down to the bottom. Front end over. Walking backwards. Good. Now please remember, when it all falls apart, it's not like you got to jump off and go home. It's just him process, and he's working his way through it. He'll be fine. I know he will. I knew it when I before I got on. He's not two years old. He's not scared. He's not anything. He's just a horse that hasn't been shown the correct way to back up. <sighs> Exhale. Sit. Legs off. Walking backwards. Intentional steps. In collection. The rein was loose. So he just told me, I know that you know that I know that you know. So, if you don't mind, horse, here I come. The cue is right now. Walk backwards. You don't have to get bothered, just walk backwards. Thank you so much. Please move over. Good. Now keep walking. As long as I'm asking, you need to walk backwards. Good. You got to understand now I'm making contact and then I'm turning him loose. See it? And he's carrying himself. That's called self carriage. It'll get better as the weight of the western bit finishes this off. What that means is that the weight of the western bit, he will hang it like a pendulum, get comfortable with it, and learn to carry it balanced. Backwards is coming right now. You're fine. Thank you. Left leg back. Good. You're fine. Release. Back up. Both legs on. Both legs off. And cut. Okay, folks. Now we're back to a western bridle. He's been ridden in a western bridle. This isn't new. What I want to do is we're trying to refine the western bridle and get him to ride off of the seat instead of the hand. So there's a lot of ways to do this and you're going to have to decide which one works for you. One of them is, is to put your hand on the your little finger. The only rule is you can't leave the mane. Now your hand is like this. So you're just using this for the angle. It's geometry. Your right hand is going to pull the rein and then release it. So just leave your left hand there and once again, you take your legs off, you look up, and as soon as the foot moves, you start giving the rein back. And what you're waiting for is an intentional step. There was one. He moved his hip, so my right foot goes way back. He doesn't like that when I straighten his hip out. Now I'll straighten his front out. There. Okay, so that's one way. Another way is like this. This is why I have split reins. I've got options. Now I can put my hand like this across the reins and I get a short rein and I put my hand on the neck and I just simply slide my hand down the neck. Now I'll shorten the rein a little bit more and I'll slide my hand down the neck. Now I take my leg off. Now you got to know that what's going on right now is his right hind wants to bend out. So I have to take the time to reach back with my spur and straighten him out. And tell him that's not acceptable. To me, that's just a brace to get away from my hand. So now my hand is flat going down the neck. He's bridled up. I got a loose rein. My legs are off. My head is up. I kick the hip over. 
I get the horse walking backwards and I keep giving the rein back about an inch or half an inch. Now I sit down and I'm done. The part that everybody forgets is that while you're doing this, your legs are off. Always remember, you got to keep your, watch my knee. Leg off, leg on, leg off, leg on. That's the part you got to remember because that's the part that's going to make him understand to walk backwards. Now I'm going to sit down, sit up, take my legs off. Now I need you to walk backwards. I'll pull if he doesn't make it, then I'll give it back. So when I connect these dots, I don't have to pull. I just have to take my legs off. When you see him throw his head, it's because I'm using my foot to straighten him out. There. All he needs to do is figure out he can do this without throwing his head. It's that simple. That's him processing. That's him going through it. And as soon as he figures it out, he'll be glad. Because there'll be no more pressure. Okay. For him, I was having pretty good luck this way. Because I can release better. Legs are off, horse is walking backwards. Boom, that's it. That's how it starts. Now the way it'll get fast is I'll put him, when I go down saddle him and I get within 50 feet of the tack room, I'll just turn around back to the tack room. Then he'll, he'll figure out he's going home to get the saddle off. Oh, by the way, I'll be walking backwards. Oh, by the way, he'll be doing it intentionally. Then he'll fool his own self. He'll teach himself how to walk backwards with some kind of dignity. So those are just some hints. Now the next thing that's going to happen when you get this back up going, this is when you start the turnaround. I'm going to back up. I'm going to turn my left toe out. As the right front foot comes off the ground, I'm going to place it out and back. That's the prelims to getting a horse to turn around clean. So now he hasn't had this happen to him. So now I'll get him back in. And when he's correct, I will simply pick him up right now and set that foot out. And then I'll pick up the other foot and set it out. See how it was stuck? I'll start freeing up those front feet. And that's what'll set him up to turn around nice and clean. So once again, I'll say it a thousand times. If you've got patience and, un and understand release, you can get a horse to do this really light. And he does it when he's done, he doesn't he doesn't, he's not mad at you. He's fine. I mean, he may have to process it, but he's not resentful. So then later on, you'll be up here, you'll take your legs off and on a loose rein, he'll walk backwards. Then you'll pick his foot up with your left toe and place his right foot out. And that's the transition of starting to make a one-handed Western riding horse. So I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.